Cuckoo's Podcast. Free Cuckoo's Podcast. Free Cuckoo's Podcast. Free Cuckoo's Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Three Cuckoo's Talks Broadchurch Series 3, Episode 7. I'm Rob. This is Mark. Hello. If you're watching this, obviously you're a fan of Broadchurch. Click like, subscribe to the channel. All right. That'd be ace. What well, you got to tell him, Mark? You've gone at the end. It's fine. <laughs> and comment as well. Obviously, it was the penultimate episode this time. So we need to know your thoughts. Um, so where do we start with this, Mark? Where do you start? Well, we've got to start with Ed Burnett, surely. Do we? Yeah, because he's in custody. He's been interviewed. And that's how it ended. That's how the last episode ended. No, it didn't. The last so, episode ended with Mark Latimer climbing off a boat into the water. Oh, well, yeah. Okay. Well, should we talk about that first, then? Want. Get it out of the way. All right. Well, he's alive. Oh, thank God. Spoiler alert. Mark. <laughs> Mark. Blackmore. So we kind of speculated last week that it might have been a bit of a... Um, is he just having visions of himself climbing off a boat? Mm. Or did he jump off the cliff? Yeah. Um, you know, and he's pictured himself in a boat with Danny. Yeah. But no, he did climb he off a boat. Off he jumped off the cliff. He didn't, did he? He just climbed off the boat. Did he? Yeah. Or did he jump off a cliff? No, he didn't. Into the water? No, he found... No, because <clears throat> it was just rocks at the bottom of the cliff, wasn't it? <gasps> yeah, it was, yeah. So he got. It didn't make off that very boat. clear for my tiny mind. No. To be fair, obviously. So it, obviously, it only came in. It was just Beth. He woke up to see Beth Latimer, Latimer at the bottom of his bed, <laughs> ready to kick his face in. Let's be honest. She didn't take it very li- lightly, did she? No. 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 Um, thank God Chloe was there, or Mark might have been killed by his wife. <laughs> just strangulation. Pillow over his head. Yeah, I don't think he'd have stopped her. To be fair. No. And then. No. Um, so, yeah, we found out that the Coast Guard had rescued him. Apparently. I must have missed that as well. And he'd fallen unconscious, and two minutes later, you'd have been hyperthermia. You'd have drowned. Poor Mark. Poor Mark. Um, but, yes, yeah, so he's alive. Pretty awful for his other kids. Well, it is, but he's alive. I've got nothing left, Chloe. Oh, cheers, Dad. It'd have been... <laughs> yeah. What's up, you too? You've got a daughter. It's like two years old, barely two years old. Um, so, yeah, now... So, where does that leave us, really? Is Mark alive for a reason, Mark, or not? Yeah. Is it just, that's his story now? I think, I think that's their story. It must it's be. Finished. It's, it's got to be, on it? It has to be. It's got to be. It's, that's it. It's, it's you know. Yeah. It, it, I think it should be. That should be the end of that. should be finished. I think so. You don't think they're we're going to see Joe again? They've drawn out, no. One episode left. What for? We're not, well, exactly. Why do we need Joe back in it again? I don't think we do. He's got the closure that you were after. Aren't he? I suppose he so. He found out the truth from the horse's mouth. Ma- horses. The mouth. horse's mouth. He found out the truth from the horse's mouth. Yep. He's been saved from dying. He's moved back in with them, so they moved him in with them. Yeah. After she admitted she wanted to kick his head in. Well, she wanted do, to punch you? him in the face. You would do, wouldn't you? The Reverend looked disgusted by that, by the way. He was disgusted. He but said he was disgusted. The lack of... Um, what's the word? Sympathy. Yes, the lack of sympathy from yeah. his own wife, ex-wife, wife. The ex-wife. Well, wife. she wants a divorce. Yeah, but yeah, she, she was. She, I've just had enough. I'm yep. tired of it. I'm my own shit to deal with. She's putting on a brave face. He was face like, for "Yeah, him, you're so. right. Fuck him, mm. wanker." <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, skipping back to the actual. I hope that's just wrapped it up. I think it has. I, I think so. it has. So going back, Ed Burnett's in custody. Ed. Um, he's obviously been outed as this. Stalker. Why was your suit dirty? Well, that was the main thing, wasn't it? Why was your suit dirty? Well, I fell down. <laughs> he had an argument, didn't he? And he left the party. <laughs> I fell yep. down, dude. Yeah, and he reckons he's not a drinker. Well, he's not a drinker. But I fell down a hill, didn't I? Slipped and fell down a hill. And I rolled and rolled all the way to the bottom. <laughs> Do you think he was the one the taxi driver picked up? Uh, well, it could have been. Could have been. Do you think he'd have known? They'd have known each other, possibly. Maybe not. Not necessarily. I don't know. Taxi drive Clive. Cliver. Taxi driver Cliver. He's there, look. Cliver Lucas. Yeah, we've added. We've lined up all the, the pictures. We've added the, some pictures. I think here, out of all them, we can. I think we can cross off Paul. You think we're crossing off Paul? I think we can cross off Ed. Do you th- right, we're crossing off I'm Ed. Cross off Ian. And Ian? Yeah. So we're going Twine Boy, Jim Twiner. Atwood, and Cliver. It's one of them. Driver Cliver. Or multiples of those three. <laughs> anyway, get back to the story. So Ed, yeah. So they asked him, and he, he was, he was, 
you know, it was a bit woolly. But he's been fairly open about what's well, going on. Has. Whether he's lying or not is a different matter. It was a bit woolly at times. Is excuse- oh, I, cl- I fell downhill. But that's the Sat way on they, my arse. That's the way they like to play, isn't it? Well, yeah, but it was it was very you know, I don't know. It was it was it wasn't convincing. Okay, but I don't think it's him. So what they tried to do with the episode was that it was his section was first, wasn't it? Yeah, and then it went to um, Kath, didn't it? Yeah, who'd found a few bits and bobs mm. of Jim Atwood's. Yep. Yeah. Um, the condoms in the car yeah. with a receipt. Mm-hmm. Who keeps a receipt for Johnny's? Jim. I mean, why would back. you need a receipt? I he's taken back. Just in case one of them breaks and you go, hang on a minute. I ain't got a chance. I didn't use these ones. Refund. <laughs> what were they called as well? Mate. But like, no, Jurex. they were clearly like Jurex. French ticklers. They, they were like, they were like um, Henox or something. Henox? Yeah, there was something weird. Right, I don't know. Extra ribbed. <laughs> I, I thought I'd made a note of it as well. Mm. Extra large. Yeah. Whiz bang condoms. <laughs> They're like popping candy. <laughs> <laughs> Chocolate orange flavour. So yeah, the glow in the dark. Yeah. They could just see it. That was the light in the distance. Covered in sherbet. <laughs> just him swinging one on before. Um so yeah, so obviously then Kath went to the cops. Did she go to the cops? Uh no. Yeah, she did. She turned up. Hang she on, just... got arrested first. Well, did they arrest him before that? Yeah, because we were taking his shopping inside. Yes. What Why? Was, what was that for again? I can't, I can't remember. remember. Shite. Someone will tell us in the comments. They usually do. They yeah. pick us up on all his faults. Someone will tell us. So but obviously, for whatever reason, they went and picked up. They went and picked him Jim. up. You're right. Put your shopping. Down oh! Again. The woman who was raped. Yep. Was picked up. Of course. But she wasn't picked up. He lied. She said she rung a tow truck and it never turned up. So she got, so she walked. He said, and so that's why they went to pick him up and he was taking his shopping in. But did he say he picked shopping. her up or did he say he Wait just a fixed the car? Let me get to it. Go on. So they went to pick him up. You don't put the shopping down, Jim, and come with us. Yeah. So they did. And when they were talking, so they interviewed him about it. And when they were talking about the woman, yeah. he said, at some point he said, yeah, I remember. I went, I picked her up. No, took a, say, brought a car said? back and then took her home again. Ah, really? And she said that he never did. He said, she, so he's lied about that. Do you not remember? That. She said that the tow truck never turned she, up. She definitely said she, that straight away. He said he picked her up. He lied. Right, okay. I, didn't, I don't he remember her. Young, long hair, pretty. In her 30s, pretty. Red old Cleo. Oh, you remember her now. Big back seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jim Atwood. Irresistible Jim Atwood. He lied. Right, okay, so he's lied about that. I think he did. And then Kath... I don't, no, no one else seems to have picked up on this but me. I'm good at this. Okay. I should be a fucking detective. <laughs> D.I. Mark over here. Um, I'll cut your tiny cock off. <laughs> so, then, so then, obviously, Kath turns up. She's found some condoms in his car with a receipt. With a receipt. And they happen to be the same condoms, saying that you could buy them anywhere. Well, she rung Trish. Well, she did. Did he use a condom? Yeah. She believes it's him. She thinks it's him. Oh, he's banked around. And she's found a copy of Climax magazine as well. It's my favourite. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were a kind of a fiesta kind of guy. No, no. No. Climax all um, day long. Definitely Climax. Mm. Um, <laughs> what a name from... I bet they were thinking, what can we name a mag? Big Bots. Who's going to come up with this? Who's going to Photoshop this magazine together? Dorset Girls. <laughs> Dorset Girls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cornish Clunge. You could have had that. <laughs> Dors- Dorset Dorises. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, <Cobble> dear. Clung. <laughs> yep. Southern Snatch. Full get page. Get spr- yeah. Jesus. Um, right. So, so we think Jim's lied. I think he has. Right. No one else seems to have picked up on this. So they kind of broke it into sections, didn't they? They did. Then they went on to Jim, which was all of that. Yeah. And then they went on to Twine, Why did you have condoms? Twine Boy. They went back to him. Why they did you did. have condoms? Yeah. Well, I bought some, didn't I? What for? On the afternoon of oh, your I'd... wife's 50th birthday, oh, I just buy a, a tasty young piece. <laughs> yeah. So Jim Atwood, oh, apparently, Jim. he's just irresistible to women. He Man, turns woman, up at a party. Beast. With condoms, There's some ready. pretty young girl at the party who's giving him a few dirty looks. Yeah. And he thinks, I'm going to have her. 
Which she did, well, sort of. Well, yeah, up against a bush. He took her outside. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> up against a tree. That's what he said. Yeah, well, yeah. Lied again. Why? Because he didn't. Well, he, well, he said so he was So they went to talk to her. Yeah. And she said no. She was very open in and forthcoming, wasn't she? Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Very the wrong words, Very possibly. obliging. Um, yeah. She said, yeah, well, yeah, we did. Went for a bit of a walk. And yeah. yeah. None of that. When it got a bit rough. Ooh, Jim. <laughs> she did say they were at it, though, didn't they? No, I don't think she did. But he just didn't. Well, he didn't. Uh, there was a, quite a graphic. He didn't finish. Yes. He didn't climax. No, I think. <laughs> yeah, that was the magazine. Um, he didn't climax. Like the favourite. I think there was something about his load. She said something about his load, and I was like, "That's a, that's a that's an image." Dilf. <laughs> yeah, Dilf. Jim Atwood. Dilf. Hardy didn't like that, did he? Well, no. Um, he doesn't like that kind of talk, Mark. No. Um, so yeah, Kath brought him in, and then they asked her, "Do you know? Oh yeah, check where you were on these dates." She was away. Spa day. She has a few of them. Spa day. Yeah, it said spa day. So the other two rapes, he, she wasn't there. She wasn't there. She's not got an alibi. It's a good job they have all those bloody calendars. We've made Ed look like the devil in that picture. Ed looks like, the, he looks like the devil. Look at him. I know. Is that that is definitely from Broadchurch as well, isn't it? Makes him look guilty. Where was that from? <laughs> that was in the police station. In, in the interview room, wasn't it? That's yeah. terrible. You can tell by the light. So, yeah, obviously, while all this is going on, we've got Ian, who just fronts up, look... We did a few stupid things, and we put some spyware on my wife's machine so I could look at her through the webcam because she leaves it open all the time. <laughs> yep. Because he's lonely, Mark. And to be fair to him, he went to Kath. Can I come in? Oh, sorry, Trish. Went to Trish. Can I just come in and have a word? Yeah, all right then. Look, I've kind of done something really reckless. He told the police first. He told the cops first because they gave him an ultimatum. You tell us it was Hardy, wasn't it? You go you away. go for a walk. Go for a walk. Take a few deep breaths. <laughs> However we think. Or I'm going to arrest you. Your wife's been raped. <laughs> so, I love it when he gets angry. It's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, obviously, then he goes and tells Trish first. Better do. Yeah. And then uh, he obviously swings Twine Boy into it as well. Did he? Did he actually drop him? I think he did, I didn't, didn't he? I didn't hear it. Did he not? I can't remember. I don't think he... Surely he must have He went have and told her. I don't remember whether he dropped Twine Boy into it or not. I think he, he may have done. Mm. They want to talk to him. Oh, yeah, they must have done because they talked to him after. They spoke to him. They dragged him in, didn't they? Maybe I went to a kabaroo. Yeah. So, obviously, he's... At least he admitted it. I don't think Ian's in the frame. I'm sorry. It feels to me like he's telling the truth. I'm discounting Ian, everyone. I me am. Me, personally, I am. I am. I think he's too sincere about... He's just been a bit silly. Yeah. And he's not getting enough from that geography teacher. Yeah. That he's been rolling on. And not anymore. No. So, you know. So they decided they'd have a word with uh, Twine Boy. Twine Boy. Leo. All right, Twine Boy. Yeah. Twiner. <laughs> <laughs> so now he obviously completely changes. You, you see, know, as we far, know him as this. As far as that, yeah. He's been really cocky throughout the whole series. What did so she say? Sniggering little shit. Something like, something like yeah. shit. And and then even when he's, his girlfriend... Um, when he asked her to lie. Completely lied. Um, By the book as well. Scripted. Yeah. And then he got in the taxi, didn't he? Yeah. So he knows the taxi driver yep, as well. he does. He convinced, recorded the whole thing. And is he a footballer as well? Yeah, he was putting the kit in the bag. Do you not remember when they found the sock? Yeah. And then the last scene of that one was the close-up of went down onto his sock. And they used the twine to put the goal posts. Um, well, he makes the, the twine, up. Robert. Yeah. But they use the twine to put the nets up. Yeah. Don't they? But then he then he was totally different, and he was telling him about oh, completely he changed his tack. And, and you know, yeah, he's had a hard time. Look, I've been. A, he really helped me. But then, now. was he quite? He was quite sincere about that. Was he? Do sincere? you believe him? Or was or he lying? Well, do you believe him? No. That's the case. No. Nope. Do Hardy and Miller believe him? Yep. I think they might have done actually. They want Jim to be for fair. This, I think now. I think they want Jim. But then, obviously, we find out that. The DNA has come back from the sock. Yeah. That was quite late on in the episode. That was the last thing in the episode. That was one... Yeah, it was... Around. Oh, no, that wasn't the last thing. No, it wasn't. Because what they tried to then do was completely turn it again. Obviously, we know... Cliver. Cliver. Clive Lucas, the taxi driver. We know that he's a very shady character. We've known that since day one in the cab, the shady-looking cab driver. Do you remember? In the very yeah, first episode... Look yeah, that's the, staring that's down the, the road. That's the picture. That's the picture we've the first chosen. One staring at that her. was the third epi- first episode. So we put a little poll out online 
uh, on Twitter. Did we? Yeah, we did, yeah. And we said, is it Twine Boy? Is it Jim, the mechanic? Is it Ed Burnett? Or is it Clive, Clive, Driver, Driver? Clive, Driver. Clive, Clive the Driver. Clive came out on top uh, with 53% of the votes. And this votes. this wasn't, Ooh. when was this? This wasn't, this was before no, I don't know. episode seven aired. So I was quite impressed by everybody's thinking it's Definitely, about it. definitely not in Clive. <laughs> Which is a bold statement, right? Because I'm, I'm one of these, I'm open, I'm just like, Let's just see, because you know how Series 1 went. It could be anybody. But at the end of the episode, it really did pin Clive. She, uh, his missus is watching some porn <laughs> on his machine. Didn't look very graphic to me, Mark. Just looked like a, a fashion parade. They've got to start somewhere, Rob. I, I don't think I've seen that uh, that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, they have, yeah, they can't show it like graphically. Look straight into the fucking bag. <laughs> have you ever watched a porno? There's usually some sort of... Oh, do you watch come to fix your like storyline? Yeah, do you? I've come to fix your telly. We're not back in the seventies. <laughs> I've come to fix a gas fire. <laughs> All right, I've brought that twine you ordered. Let's get to the banging. There you go, storyline. So, <laughs> chef. So, she obviously finds some uh, some razzmatazz. Porn. <laughs> yeah, on climax.com. <laughs> and um, she's think... like, well, how much else have you been giving Stepson? How much have you been giving him? What's his name? No idea who he wants, isn't it? Don't know. You Bruno. know what to do with it anyway. Bruno. Bruno. Um, yeah, how much porn have you been supplying to Bruno and his mates? What else have you been up to? <laughs> do, you really do you really want, want to know, know the answer to that? <laughs> oh, oh. Has he got a Cornish accent? <laughs> no, I don't think he, <laughs> he has. He might not be. Do you want to know the answer to that? He's not Phil Mitchell. No, he's not. Possibly not. It might be better said, if he was. She didn't think she she did want to know, but she didn't ask him. Well, it's maybe not a good idea to she know. She toddled off then, didn't she? Well, she kind of knew what was going on then, didn't that she? That was she the last had, scene. Had her suspicions. She was in the garage. He's got a lock up, and if you watch a lot of these crime dramas, somebody has a lock up, mm. <laughs> right? Is yeah. that where he parks his cab? Do we? Are we just yeah. thinking it's his garage? Yeah, yeah. It's a garage, and he's got some old wooden chest of drawers or whatever. In yeah, there. and if you were in drawers, so bored. All his keepsakes. Yeah. All his stuff is stolen. All locked up. From his... Hey, there was shitloads of stuff in there. The what? Purses. Copies of Climax. Yeah. I don't think there was any copies of Climax. He's a subscriber. I subscribe. This is the first issue. Got it laminated. (laughs) Free binder. (laughs) Every couple of episodes. Every couple of issues. Yep. And then she she pulls out a key ring. With Trish and her daughter on. Horrible photo, by the way. And what happens? Very nice. Very cute. Um, Well, he turns up, doesn't he, then? Cliver comes back. Yeah, and he, he does. Just gets out looking all menacing like. I don't think there was anything else that we could kind of pinpoint, was there? It all seemed to be female things, though, didn't it? The purse, yeah, keys, yeah. maybe a headband or two. I don't think it's him. I right. think he's the one who's recorded it. But the way it was filmed and edited, it pinned it on him yeah. right at the death. He's a voyeur. Oh, he's he a likes voyeur. to watch. You see, we've got a theory that there's more than one. If you've been watching these videos, you might understand that. I broke this long before it was in the papers he's and everything. Breaking news. Um, so yeah, we think, so you think he's the voyeur, don't you? You think I he's think he recorded filmer. it and he's, right, okay. he's going to be passing it out. So somebody else is on it. Twine boy. Do we think it's got anything to do with the porn that Olivia yes. Coleman's Probably. son's been watching? Probably. He's just supplying him with it. Maybe they pay for it. Oh. These kids. Right, okay. Maybe he sells it to them. Do you think it's the rape though that they're watching? No, not that's necessarily. Complete? No, Maybe that's, so. that's probably just for his own personal collection. He got a bit, it got a bit out of hand. His yeah. collection, right? I, okay. So uh, we've we've only put a picture of Paul there because somebody thinks it's him. There's I a, think it's ridiculous. There's a few theories kicking about online that it's it crazy. could be. I, I think it's because of the first season because it, it went yeah. to somewhere that you just had no idea. Yeah. But that was the the I bang at crazy. the end of this. It's crazy. Uh, of the it's definitely not him. I don't think it's him. But it was a good. It's a great picture. Look at him. Um, so what did you think of like the the midnight walk thing with all the ladies D- standing um, up against the. It, well, it's weird. We're not because gonna let him win. As soon as I saw it, right, I thought it was like the Ood from Doctor Who holding up their bulbs, yeah. right? I don't know if you know who the Ood are. Um, and Chris Chibnall's going to write Doctor yeah. Who, which I thought was a bit ah. Oh, well, it was it was reminiscent of the burning, the beacons being lit, wasn't it, for Danny in season one? Yeah, very similar. Yeah. Um, listen, it's a nice display of it solidarity. Really, it was really good. It was. It was really good. Yeah. Really strong showing of you know, there's a lot of horrible, horrible men 
in this season of Broadchurch. Yes, there is. Disgusting, horrible men. There it's is. Nice to see, you know, them showing that sort of strength of women together. I thought it was really excellent. Yeah, they all have something in their closet. Yeah. Every single one of them's done wrong. I was going to say Mark's actually coming out a little bit squeaky clean, but Am he's I? not because he was oh, uh, he was Mark. knocking off the hotelier in the first yeah, season, wasn't he? That. And that's obviously he was there when Danny got he was there strangled. when yeah he was. Well, it was done at that point apparently. Um, then we uh, then of course we had um, the p- stupid storyline with this newspaper woman. Uh, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't see the point. Well, I don't. And do you think it's just the writers trying to? Make a point about something that we don't really like a understand. Point about yeah, how shit the Daily Mail is. We already know that. Yeah, somebody reviewed it in the press and said it was obviously a, a swipe at the Daily Mail's um, right-sided column. Yeah. You know, you go into the bar with the bar of shame, as it's more commonly known, yeah. isn't it? You don't read the bar of shame. Oh, clickbait, and that's fair enough. I, I get it. I get it. But is it necessary? No. And it's nothing to do with it. No, there's nothing. I didn't and get it at all. It was terribly scripted. It was really poor. I didn't like the way it was. As they say in America, screw you, Petal. <laughs> she should have said it with an American accent. Yeah, I didn't get that. And I think it's a total waste of time and why they're doing it. I kept shouting at it. Did just you? fucking get on with it. This is just shit. I think, the point? I think you should film yourself watching it no, next week. No one needs to see that. <laughs> just to see the anger on your face when it turns out to be the I Reverend. Can... <laughs> it's the Reverend but fucking TV will be on front, in front yard. That's what I want to see. I want to see it. I'll be fucking livid. A big shout out, of course, we'll to fucking Hardy because that was just amazing. Oh, David Tennant in this episode, right, was just superb, wasn't he? It wasn't Olivia Coleman based this week. Obviously, she was in the whole thing. She nicked his toast, which I thought was brilliant. I laughed and laughed. Milo, <laughs> fucking toast. Um, at least he didn't microwave the bread, which would have gone... But his daughter decided she would arms. leave him. Yeah. So he gave her a lift to the train station. Olivia Coleman wanted to tear up a ticket there and then... On the way there, <laughs> he saw them boys. Oh, he did. Them boys. The, um, it was good. It, it was great, because he just stops the car, slams all on, and he gets beeped at, didn't he? Yeah. I'm the police! <laughs> You'll stay there! Piss off. Brilliant. If I ever see you... <laughs> it, it wasn't just me. He went Scottish. Oh, like. Yeah. I mean, it went up a notch. If I ever see you, I'll <laughs> chop your tiny cocks off. You can't say that. You're the police. Piss off. <laughs> DVD. I'm a father. Brilliant. It was ace. It was brilliant. That scene was excellent. You know, when it's halfway through and you're like, oh my God, this is brilliant. It was, that found was yourself. worth the entrance fee alone. Just for yeah. that scene, it was amazing. Find yourself getting giddy. He just pulls up at these lights and he's talking to her, <laughs> and then all of a sudden he's like, Hang on. <laughs> Just jumps out of the that car. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Hey, you. Yeah. And then he gets in. Give me your fucking ticket. <laughs> it tears it up. Yeah. Dad. So it just goes from strength to strength. Yeah. The whole thing is just amazing. And then he goes back to the station, fills in Miller. What did you do? What, literally? Tore up a ticket. Oh, good. You took my advice. Do you know what it is, Miller? I'm too nice to people. I'm just too nice to people. Best line. I'm going to be stopping you so nice. It was the best line in the episode. That so thought it was ace. Give me your prediction. Who is it? Oh God, I hate this. this right, okay. I've got a funny feeling. Pin it on him. That right. I think Clive is pinned on. I do. How or to what extent? And maybe I, I like your theory that there's a couple involved. We've said for a while it could be some kind of porn ring thing going on, and it's got a bit out of hand. Um, oh, of course, of course. Someone stashed the twine at the farm shop. Yeah. With the bloodstains on. Don't forget that. Yeah, I know, yeah. Is oh, Kath yeah. involved? Well Did Jim get her to do that? Yeah, so we had me and Mark had a bit of a conversation afterwards on on the old WhatsApp. And we think that maybe Kath's involved somehow. But I'm not sure. Is no, that too no, much of a stretch? It is a li- I think it is a little bit. Now we now obviously straight away you think, well, Jim Atwood's kind of pinned on, right? He's got. Do you know what I thought? It's what? Go on. Lenny Henry says to his daughter, oh, I was just moving some stuff and I found these. Yeah. Well, you could have also put them there yourself. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and tried to kind of discount yourself by saying it wasn't me yeah. to your cop daughter. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we thought Jim Atwood, obviously, but then they don't seem. Him and Cliver Driver. Cliver. He, they, they don't. Weren't friendly. They don't seem to know each other. There was an exchange a couple of episodes back. Twine Boy and him. They're friendly. Well, Twine Boy, yeah. Now, obviously, we're going to find out about the sock. Well, I mean, it's obviously, it's the last episode. We're going to find out everything. I'm just hoping they don't rush it. Um, I'm going with Clive 
the driver, as our listeners did as well. But who else? And it's it's got to be Twine Boy. It's got to be Leo. Clive a rapist. He the, likes to watch. You think, he recorded do you think it. so? I'm going with Jim. It can't Still, be just one, can I'm it? I'm going with Jim. Still. Uh, in fact, uh, there were so many people walking around this bloody grounds of this place. It was crazy. I've got a funny feeling it's going to be someone that you've no idea. If they do that and again, it's going like to be season one. Yeah. I'll fucking kill him. <laughs> I'll kill Chibnall. I'll find out where he lives and kill him. So I'm going with Jim Atwood still. Right, okay. All right. He's been my favourite all along, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying Boy it so much. Cliver. I'm willing to just let them roll with it and yeah. let them see. Well, it's the season finale, the last ever Broadchurch next week, wait. Rob. I cannot wait. Please join us next week for the for the end, our review of the end. The end it's going to be wrapping it up. At this time next week, we'll know exactly who it is yeah. and it'll all be done with. Please uh, leave a like. Leave a uh, comment. Subscribe to the channel. That'd be wicked. So Tell we, us who it is before, before we find out. Because we're going to doing some stuff. Um, Absolutely, yeah. If you're a fan of Better Call Saul, we're going to be reviewing that as well. Because that started season three. Um, yeah. yeah. And yeah, and that's pretty much it. Just leave a like. Leave share. a like, subscribe, share it, do all the stuff. Comment, right. let us know what you thought. Let us know who you think it is. And it's definitely not the priest, by the way. <laughs> definitely <laughs> not him. We'll see you later, guys. Bye. We'll see you later. Three Cuckoos Podcast. Three Cuckoos Podcast. Three Cuckoos.